a voodoo ritual and a mysterious death, a Charlotte woman went to Haiti for a spiritual retreat and never came back home. Y'all gonna learn to stop messing with Haitian voodoo. Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In case you're new here, my name is Maren. And I'm Maureen. Right, so in today's episode, we are going to be reacting to the Dana Jackson case. In case you guys don't know about her, this is a black American woman who traveled all the way to Haiti from Charlotte to go and practice voodoo and also be initiated into becoming a voodoo priestess. Yeah, and the reason why her case caught so, many, uh, so much attention was because Dana left America alive and well, but she never came back from Haiti instead her death certificate was sent to her son and now her son wants to know answers to the questions that he bears what happened to his mother and you know because of this case we've followed a few Haitian creators on tiktok and we really thank god because of tiktok right now information is disseminated much faster than a while back so People from TikTok, specifically Haitians, most of them are saying that you should re people should really not mess around with voodooism because even they themselves, if they can, they stay away from voodooism. Right. But we don't want to talk a lot, guys. Let's just watch this video and then we come back and talk about it. Remember to subscribe if it's your first time here. Also, leave us a comment on what you think about this topic. Let's watch and then we come back and talk about it. A voodoo ritual and a mysterious death a Charlotte woman went to Haiti for a spiritual retreat and never came back home. Her family says that they were told she died there. Well, they say questions around her death remain, including how, and they haven't had any answers. Her family is only talking to Channel 9's Amelia White about their search for closure. What's going through your mind? Um, I guess at this point, just trying to really understand what happened to my mom. Timothy Jackson has more questions than answers. After his mom, Dana Jackson, traveled to Haiti last month, but never returned to her home in Charlotte. My mom did not go to Haiti to not come back. He said Dana felt called to practice voodoo and went to Haiti for a spiritual retreat to become a mambo priestess. She landed on July 1st. Once she let me know she was okay, that was like the biggest thing because it was like, okay, you're where you're supposed to be and you're safe. The two stayed in touch through WhatsApp and Dana would often send videos and pictures. Um, my mom was taking it in and just I feel like she needed this. He says the last message he received from her was on July 12th. Like, I don't understand people who want to dabble into Haitian voodoo. If Haitians, you know, some of us, we're like, you know what? We hear about this voodoo stuff. We don't want to mess around with it because we hear what can happen. <laughs> now, why would you want to mess with Haitian voodoo? So, babies, let's talk about this. So Dana Jackson from Charlotte um, went to Haiti to become a Mambo priestess. She went to practice voodoo in Haiti and was unalived at this retreat she went to to practice voodoo or learn voodoo. She felt she was called to practice voodoo. Rest in peace, Miss Dana Jackson, but let's talk about this. Um, What behooves me is people's interests and things they are unaware of, things they don't understand, things that they know nothing about, things that they don't understand that for in. I will say this, people want to know about stuff that some of us should probably leave alone. We should we should leave it alone. There are certain things that we should not be involved in. There are certain things that we shouldn't be doing. See, everybody's interested in stuff they don't know about, but they don't know the cost, the price. And this lady paid with her life. Paid with her life. Now, they trying to figure out what happened to her and nobody's ever going to find out. Like there are some things and some spiritual things you do not deal with. There are some things you don't awaken. There are some doors you do not open and you leave closed, people. So let this be a warning to you. Please, sometimes a call you are answering may not be one from good. It may be from evil. Y'all need to think about this. I do not know which society she joined. The reason why I'm talking about that is it touched me because... Again, as I said, going down that route, and we don't know what happened. It's a lot of speculation. Not even the son knows what happened. He don't know. Here's what I know. Let's say you are called to do spiritual work and it's in the, and it's voodoo, whether it's 
Obia like myself, I'm St. Lucian, or Haitian or African voodoo. When you are chosen, your head spirit will immediately put a protection on you. So nothing can happen to you. Let me repeat that again. When you are chosen, your head spirit will immediately put a protection on you. So nothing can happen to you. So if you are called to do any form of spiritual work, your head spirit step in and put a protection on you. Now, that does not mean you should go out there and do dumb stuff. No. And also spirits, they will communicate with you and they will tell you your do's and your don'ts. They will give you your directives and you have to follow. So that's why I'm saying that we don't know with this lady. Unless someone who knows her come out and say, I was the one who did her initiation. I was the one spirit gave the message to give to her because let's say at that time, um, she can't receive messages directly from spirit and somebody else have to give her that message. We want to hear from, I would love to hear from that person. So let's update on Dana Jackson. For those of y'all that didn't see the, the last one, she is the lady that went over to Haiti to um, learn voodoo. And they don't know what happened to her. She was unalived. Okay, so what is going on now is that the body has been moved three times. Um, the son said when they read on the, the, the I guess, the unalived certificate. I used unalived certificate. Um... It just seems kind of off. But the body has been moved three times. And they don't know where the body is. That's the last I heard. Now, several things um, don't sit well with me about that. Um, I don't know if some of y'all know about some of the rituals. But the body being moved multiple times, not being able to find it, that's a problem. That should be very, very, very disturbing it, it really is and if you know you know and um i don't like to speak on a lot of those things because there's a lot of things you just shouldn't speak on or shouldn't let some people know about i'm just saying that's just me and maybe another person on another video would, would elaborate more into what that means me i do not open my um energy up to those kind of things that is why i tell people be careful what you open your energy to be careful what you practice out here in these streets because you never know what what you are opening your energy up to um i'm sure this lady had great intentions of learning these spiritual rituals or whatever they were doing over there but i don't think she realized the risk and the dangers it was. I don't think a lot of people take that seriously. Um, I feel like some people just take it for play play. What I do want to tell you, for every dark reaction, there is a there's for every darkness, there's a light, and for every light, it's a darkness. And if you understand what I'm telling you, it is what it is. I'm just saying, you have to pay the piper at some time. And people don't understand that. Like, I'm going to practice this. Okay, I hope you know what you're doing. I hope you know what you're opening your energies to. Um, most people do not. Um, I don't play with that stuff. Even when I go down to the city in New Orleans, I don't go in voodoo shops. I do not. I do not. I don't let people touch me or read my palm. There's a lot of things people don't understand. Letting a person touch you. Is exchanging energies I don't let a lot a lot of people touch me because you can absorb energy and you can release energy people don't understand it and when you grow up in the south you're taught that in a young age like be careful who touch you um, be careful who you create soul ties with just be careful out there like we were taught early nobody is to read your palm out here on those streets and I don't allow that I don't I don't even get close enough to the tables I don't go to view that's why I don't go to the voodoo shop I don't know what's in there like y'all might think it's a trinket and somebody that came in there and switched something around and y'all walking out here wondering what didn't happen to your life see 
y'all don't be understanding these things, but I understand that way too well to be playing these type of games. So I just hope that this lady, whatever happened to her is a lesson. We don't know what happened to some of y'all about trying out these new spiritual things that you know nothing about. Y'all know nothing about the prices that you have to pay doing these things, okay? So my babies, I'll bring you more as the story moves on. All right. A voodoo ritual and a mysterious death. A Charlotte woman went to Haiti. Go and watch that video and come right back. All right, now that you've watched it, let's talk about it. I have three questions that are very important to this incident. Number one, what is a Haitian voodoo retreat? Number two, why was she going on this retreat? Was it for initiation or was it just to experience voodoo in a fun and safe manner? And question number three, was divination done to determine if she needed to be initiated or not? Question number one is important because a retreat is something that you go on to experience something in a fun and safe manner. It's all inclusive and in allows anybody to come and experience it as long as they're willing and able to pay for it. An initiation is a closed process. It's something that you do because you were chosen by spirits within a specific African or diasporan tradition that requires you to go through special processes to be able to work on behalf of these spirits. It is not all inclusive. It is very private and it's closed to protect the community from getting harmed by any of these processes. So basically, if she was going for an initiation, it shouldn't have been with a group that was an all inclusive you can anybody can do this type of situation that's a huge red flag question number two why is she going on this retreat was it to be initiated or was it just to experience voodoo in her own uh way fun safe way and from the news report it sounds like she was going to get initiated to be a mambo or a priestess in haitian voodoo I'm not sure how sh this was determined because there is a process to determine if you are to be a, pro a priestess or not. We don't know if that was done. So it's concerning to hear from the news report that she was going on this retreat for an initiation process that, again, is a process that is closed and not all inclusive. And why was she going on a retreat like trip to do that? If she was going on the trip for the fun and experience of voodoo, that would be one thing. But because she was not, this is a huge red flag. Question number three, was a divination done to determine if she's even called to be a priestess? This is very important because if a divination was not done to determine that she was chosen by these spirits called the Lawa, sorry. If she was not chosen by the Lawa to do work on their behalf, she is in danger of offending these spirits and causing her own demise if she goes down this process and it was not for her to do that. The people that she was working with should know this and have done a divination to make sure that she was allowed to go through these processes. And to me, it sounds like none of this was done because of how she, the story is ending. To any of us who have been initiated into any African spiritual tradition, these three things were all red flags to us hearing this story. And so I wanted to take the time to come and explain it. Um, to those who don't know that there are processes to these practices. People are going to say, oh, she went over there playing with evil and got herself killed. That's not correct. That's very inaccurate information. There's a good and a bad to all religions on this planet. Christianity has 
Christianity, and then they also have Satanist and the devil. That's their bad side. These traditions have the same thing. Just because we're working with spirits does not make it evil, does not make it bad. That is a Christian belief, and that's your right to have that, but that is not accurate information. The reason why this person may have lost their life is that she was potentially targeted by groups who were who were being greedy and just wanted her money. They were or they were playing around with processes they're not allowed to play with. And again, were being greedy and wanted money and decided to trick people into coming on these trips for the process of getting that money. Um, essentially, that's what it sounds like to me that this would be considered like a botched initiation where inexperienced people did your initiation process and it led in someone's demise or it was kind of a scam type of thing and something else happened like maybe she had a heart incident maybe they were faking like they were doing real initiation stuff and gave her something that was poisonous and could have done something we won't fully know because we don't have all the details but i wanted to explain why those of us who have been initiated and know these practices and why they're secret and the requirements for them are concerned i'm hearing the story of this lady who um was in charlotte she's from charlotte right she was practicing haitian voodoo for four years she was doing that here and she wanted to take it a step further she went she went to um a, a retreat in haiti to become like a mambo so it's a priestess she wanted to be like a voodoo priestess now they don't know what happened to her they are telling her family somehow she um she's been missing since july that's the part of the story so she's been missing since july so her family they were trying to find out what happened to her because they were receiving conflicting information they were saying oh she had an asthma attack oh doing uh they had like a, I guess they did something and um as part of the retreat and she had like a stroke or uh she i'm like listen this lady is probably like a goat or a cat somewhere or a zombie because I'm like, listen, the Haitians, we don't be messing with voodoo like that. Not all of us do because voodoo is nothing to play with. And I feel bad for, for, for her son. He's looking for, he's trying to find out what happened to her. But I'm like, how are you going to find out what happened to her? How? And this death certificate he received, is it even real? It's crazy. I'm not sure if he he has her body like the article did not say that but I'm like Yo, stop messing with Haitian voodoo stop messing with things you guys don't know about so guys welcome back let us know what you think about this episode in the comment section I find this topic to be quite interesting and my question is why would someone willingly and knowingly go wants to go into a foreign country and learn about these foreign things that they don't quite understand yeah because it's not only dana jackson alone we've really been watching cases of people not uh, people going into haiti not only haiti but other places that practice dark magic voodoo and all of that because they want to learn how to do voodooism and my question is why would you want to gain power in order for you to manipulate elements and people? Mm. Like why? What, what, what exactly are you seeking to achieve when you're going to learn? You could go into a country, learn about their culture. You could, you could go into a country, explore their tourism industry. You could go into a country, explore their food, right? Mm. But this one chose to... Okay, she chose to go and, you know, explore more about voodooism, mm. to go back to America and become a voodoo priestess. Mm. Anyway, to each their own, I'm not judging. Cause yeah, because, you know, for the longest time, even us growing up, I don't know how many of you guys know this series called Pretty Little Liars. Mm. And it's not only in Pretty Little Liars. And then, you know, in movies like these ones that Hollywood produces, they use a lot of teenagers whom we can relate to when we are teenagers to do all these things because in hollywood movies you most often 
see people practicing uh reading the palms of other people uh doing magic with that ball seeing your future in a ball and someone in these clips was saying you should never allow or give someone that much power as to read your palm or uh read your future in a ball because you don't know who you're messing with out here right you know people may decide to read your palm and then end up being jealous of you and unalive in you yeah another thing i feel like why uh the reason as to why people fall vulnerable into such kind of practices or um sh questionable religion because mm -hmm. there was also an uh documentary we were watching on youtube mm -hmm. and in this documentary people were going for a spiritual retreat but this and one was being majorly charged palm colored yeah palm colored people mm -hmm. and they were being che charged a heck uh, lot of money, money for them to be in that retreat right and when people go to this retreat you go there you don't have your phone it's not allowed like anything that would you link you or connect communications you. with the outside world exactly so when you go there it's just you for a certain amount of uh, a period of time like a month let's say a month so the idea of which is that by the time you're coming out of this retreat you're, you're a, a born new again person. person a new person you view the world differently and i'm like this sounds like a cultic you know movement and stuff yeah because when they get there they it's like you're moving like people who have one mind exactly. robots that share one mind yeah but these people don't view it that way whoever comes out of this retreat they say when they come out of it they feel like they're at peace they feel like that they can better handle um stressful situations of they which feel i like think that like there are some retreats that yes usually do work but I when also feel like someone spiritual, spirituality. Mm -hmm. There's uh, something you're taking from those people, and there's something you'll go home with from there. I feel like it's a mind control. Anyway, anyway so personally what i wanted to say why i brought up that example is that to mm. say i feel like a lot of people right now are vulnerable not yeah. just spiritually physically mm -hmm. as well yeah mentally. especially because of to, the world of today people are very lonely because it's very difficult for people to, to connect to get real connections like human connections right. so maybe they go to this retreat hoping to find genuine connections with people and right. it is often in this retreat that cultic life movements start to grow another thing is that i feel like people feel, uh, fall vulnerable to such situations because a lot of the times guys correct me if i'm wrong there's that point in your life everybody has to go through this a point in your life where you feel like you're trying to find purpose it doesn't mm. matter what kind of uh what what event is going to bring purpose or meaning into your life but mm -hmm. just that uh, feeling of belonging that uh need for purpose finding a purpose mm -hmm. and when and such people like this lady she wanted to go to haiti to become a voodoo priestess that is what gave her purpose you know yeah that's what gave her life meaning mm -hmm. it's why she spent money to travel all the way to haiti to go and practice voodoo yeah and also it's why my sister and i we usually live by this um idea that at some point even if you feel like they, there's no purpose in your life when you finally do, do deserve to look for something to give you purpose be, be very very careful in what you decide to partake in because that mm. is where a lot of people get lost mm. in trying to find themselves anyway guys let us know what you think about this um haitians in our community we'd like to hear from you mm. and everybody in general let us know your thoughts and opinions on the comment section remember to subscribe if it's your first time here and we really appreciate you joining us on this episode let's catch you on our next